On this episode of the Whiskey Tornado, we review Weller Single Barrel. What's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Whiskey Tornado. Today we are reviewing a very sought after bottle. It is Weller Single Barrel. Most of you know this is a very sought after bottle. It is a Buffalo Trace product and pretty much all Buffalo Trace products are highly sought after. This is the same mash bill as Pappy Van Winkle and when Pappy Van Winkle became very hard to find, Weller products became very hard to find. Just last year, Weller came out with a single barrel product, which has since been impossible to find. I got extremely lucky in getting this bottle and paid MSRP, which is $50. We'll get into the value a little bit later on this bottle. This is of course a weeded mash bill and it is 48.5% alcohol or 97 proof. Today we're gonna to give it our Whiskey Tornado score and I'm also gonna compare it against two other bourbons in the same proof range and price range so that you guys will have some alternatives since more than likely you will never see this bottle and if you do see it, it's gonna be way too expensive. If you guys are new to the Whiskey Tornado, let me quickly explain our scoring system to you. We have six categories, appearance, nose, palate, finish, availability, and value. I rate each category zero to one, 0.5 being average. At the end, we add those up. Anything three or better is a buy recommendation. It is bar worthy. Anything four or better is bunker sum. And last week I asked you guys if the scoring system made sense or not. And Adam S replied, and thank you so much Adam for your response. He said, that availability scoring aspect contradicts your system of bunkering or not. In theory, I would bunker the stuff harder to find or that might disappear. Don't get me wrong, love the reviews in the channel. The right side of my brain just tells me this is backwards. And I do not disagree, Adam. I responded to Adam and said, you're not wrong. I need to change it to just buy or don't buy. Um, one thing I wanted to just make clear is don't take these reviews too seriously, guys. I'm just giving you a, a very loose guide on if I would buy this product or not and if I think you should. And hopefully it helps you on your bourbon journey. All right, so without further ado, let's get in to our scoring system. Our first category is appearance. So as you can see guys, the, the bottle is okay. The appearance to me, uh, a few years ago, this bottle looked cheap, I didn't like it. Um, as the bottle becomes harder and harder to find, something in my brain likes the appearance of it more and more. But I still think it is a pretty cheap presentation. Um, I do not like this like brown, orangish color that they've got going on. Uh, it is fall colors, but I just don't like the presentation of, of any Weller bottle, actually. Um, I'm gonna give the appearance a 0.4. All right, moving on to the nose. Let's get into this, guys. This is what you all came here for anyway. Oh, the nose is actually really nice on this on uh, Weller single barrel. It's uh, lots of caramel. I get the the further and further I get in my bourbon journey, Buffalo Trace products, specifically Weller, specifically Eagle Rare, I get these grape notes in some of those single barrels. Um, and Eagle Rare isn't technically a single barrel, but it is. Um, but I in some Eagle Eagle Rare barrels, I get heavy, heavy grape notes. Um, and on the nose on this Weller single barrel, I'm getting that grape note. Some people might get it as like a strawberry or berries note. And I think I did early on in my bourbon journey, but the more I smell and the more my palate and nose develops, now it's, it's, a, it's a grape note. So on the nose on Weller, I get caramel. Uh, that grape is really there on this bottle. Really nice vanilla. It's a very, very sweet nose. I actually enjoy the nose quite a bit. I'm gonna give the nose a 0.7. 
Okay, moving on to the palette. Cheers, everybody. So the palette on this, I said it was, uh, it's 97 proof. So you have to look at this bottle from two different perspectives. If you're a beginner into bourbon, this is going to be your jam. You are going to absolutely love this bottle. If you've been into bourbon a while, this bottle is going to let you down. Um, it is thin at 97 proof. Those caramel notes are there. Um, it has that like grape note to it. Uh, a little bit of light oak. Some nice like cinnamon red hots, but not too much. Um, but overall, it's kind of thin. It's sweet. It's got a good amount of sweetness, a good balance of oak. Um, and it does have those, those uh, like grape notes or berry notes that I enjoy that I can always kind of pick Buffalo Trace out if I, do, if I have it in a blind. Um, but to me, as somebody who's been into bourbon for a while, this is just average. It's not, it's not bad. It's not super great. Um, it's certainly nothing to chase and people are chasing this and we're gonna get into value But people I, I just saw this go for like $500 on secondary, which is insane and ridiculous um, But if you've been into bourbon for a while, this is an average bourbon. Don't get your hopes up. It's nothing spectacular It's good. It's just not worth chasing um, I'm gonna give the palette a 0.5 if you're a beginner to bourbon You might bump this up to a 0.7 because it's pretty crushable. It's really easy to drink um, You know a lot of you say smooth. You're gonna think it's smooth. You're gonna enjoy it more than I am I like a bourbon that fights me a little bit more. Okay moving on to the finish The finish is where I have to knock this at that lower proof, pretty much as soon as you drink it, it goes away pretty fast. Um, it's 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 quicker than an average finish. We're gonna have to give it below fin below average. Um, those berry notes it transitions into like a drying oak on the back of the palate, and then it's gone pretty quick. You're ready for another sip almost as soon as you drink it. Um, on the finish, we're gonna give it a 0.4. Okay, moving on to availability. Most of you are never gonna see this bottle in the store. I got extremely lucky. I won a bottle in a lottery, went to the store uh, to pick that bottle up. The store owner thought I had, I had won a different bottle, and he said, I'm sorry I accidentally sold your, your bottle. We didn't even actually say what the bottle was out loud. I said, no problem, you know, no big deal. I'll just buy something else. He said, I do have this in the back, brought it out for me. Um, and, uh, and I was able to buy this instead. Um, and, 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 you know, I was excited to have it just because I will never see this bottle. Um, I got it for MSRP, but it's really not that great as somebody who loves bourbon, who's been drinking bourbon for a while. Now, all that being said, if I have someone over that's new to bourbon and uh, you know Weller is super high up on their list, they're always wanting to try Weller, and Weller's impossible to find because it's you know the the it's Pappy Van Winkle's little brother. Uh, then I'll bust this out for them, and they will love it, and they'll be super excited. So it has a place on my bar uh, for MSRP. I would not pay over MSRP for this. But the availability, chances are you're not going to see it. I've never seen one on the shelf. I got extremely lucky, so we're going to give it a 0.1 for availability. Okay, the last category value, that's another place this takes a knock. This is a $50 bottle at MSRP. Chances are you will never see it at that. It's going on secondary for three, four, five hundred dollars which is absolutely insane. Um, if you pay over $50 for this bottle, I think you got ripped off. It is just not better than a $50 bottle. In fact, I'm gonna bring out two bottles cheaper than this that I think are better. We're gonna taste them side by side. Um, so yeah, we're gonna give it a 0.3 on value. That brings our overall score for Weller Single Barrel to a 2.4, making it just an average bourbon. This is a bourbon that if it's on your shelf, people who are newer to bourbon, who haven't tasted a lot of bourbons are gonna be impressed that you have it on your shelf. But if you have a bourbon aficionado, somebody who's tasted a lot of bourbons come over and they're into higher proof bourbons, they are gonna be extremely disappointed in this bottle. So I think a 2.4, about that average, is, is a perfect score for this. Um, it is something that if I saw for MSRP, I would buy just because it's, it's so rare 
and so hard to find, but I would never pay over $50 for this bottle. Um, in fact, sometimes I, I'm a little embarrassed to have this bottle on my shelf just because I don't want to look like a tater. <laughs> All right, so let's compare this. Let me give you guys a couple bottles to chase instead of Weller Special Reserve, since you're never gonna see it. Um, we're gonna go with two here. We are gonna go with Jack Daniels, believe it or not, Jack Daniels Single Barrel. And we are going with James E. Pepper 1776. Now, James E. Pepper 1776 is a $30 bottle. <clears throat> uh, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Select is a $40 bottle. Both very similar proof points. The Jack Daniels comes in at 47% alcohol, and uh, James E. Pepper 1776 comes in at 50% alcohol. So let's taste these next to Weller Special Reserve. Um, these are two bottles you can find in any store at any time, as opposed to this one, which you will never find. So let me start here on my left. And the nose on the Jack Daniels is beautiful. It's just as good. It's just a different flavor profile. The Jack Daniels is um, lots of caramel, almost like banana bread, nuttier, but really, really nice. But then when you move right over to the Weller, those grape notes, those berry notes really stand out. The sweetness stands out on, the, on that. But I wouldn't say one's better than the other. It's just, what do you prefer? What's your flavor profile? If you like more bananas, banana nut bread, that kind of stuff, you'll like Jack Daniels. If you like more berries, grape notes, you'll like Weller. Let's go on to the James E. Pepper. Mm. James E. Pepper is a little more rye. Uh, it's, it's got those berry notes, much more comparable to the Weller, uh, but with a little bit more rye. This is a weeded bourbon, Weller's a weeded bourbon. James E. Pepper, I believe, is higher rye, so you get a little bit more of those citrusy, peppery notes on it. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some more like black pepper on there, but beautiful and much more in line with the Weller uh, for 20 bucks less, and you'll find it all day long. All right, let's taste all these side by side. Yeah, the Jack Daniels, again, if you're a beginner into bourbon, you're gonna want those lower proofs. And this is a fantastic bourbon. In fact, it's charcoal mellowed, mellowed, so the edges are a little rounder, it's a little smoother, it's a little easier to drink, it's not gonna fight you. Um, and if you like caramel, banana nut bread, bananas foster, those kind of notes, you will love this bottle, probably more than even the Weller. So let's go to the Weller. Yeah, the Weller has more of those like, again, the actually cherry kind of stood out to me on that sip, coming off the heels of the Jack Daniels. But cherry, grape, those berry notes really stand out. Um, I don't know that either one's better, it's just a different experience. Let's go to the James E. Pepper. Oh man, that James E. Pepper is fan. Fantastic for $30. Um, to me, I think in the lineup, I actually like James E. Pepper more than the other two, uh, side by side, and it's cheaper, so it's a win all day. The finish is much longer, it's much more interesting to me, got a lot more flavor going on. Let me go back to the Weller after I had that. They're all three good. Um, Again, if I paid uh, $40 for this, I would be happy. I would be thrilled. It's got more of those banana flavors. If I paid $30 for the James E. Pepper, it's got those berry notes in it, <clears throat> that van those vanillas, but also with a peppery kick because of the higher rye, I would be extremely happy if I paid 30. If I paid 50 for the Weller, I would be okay. Uh, I would be extremely happy if I was a new, new to bourbon drinker. I would be disappointed if I was a bourbon aficionado, if I'd had a lot of bourbon. Um, if I paid anything over 50, if I paid 100, 200, 300 dollars for that bottle, I would be extremely pissed. It is not a bottle worth chasing. There's plenty of stuff on the shelf just as good. Doesn't mean that that's bad. It's just there are so many people going crazy over Weller and it's just okay, especially when you're talking about the single barrel. And again, with single barrels, they vary from barrel to barrel, but this particular barrel that I have is very average for what it is. 
and uh, I'm, I'm okay because I paid $50 for it, but had I paid over $50, I would be an extremely pissed off person. <laughs> All right, guys, hope this helps you on your bourbon journey. Until next time, cheers.